Hello, race fans. Welcome to Disc Golf Daily. It's Thursday, February 29th. We are the podcast that gets you caught up with disc golf growth and news in just 10 minutes. Happy Leap Year. If you find something interesting, share the podcast with a friend. Today is the Unified Rankings of Disc Golf Day. We call it Urge Day. Stay tuned to see who's number one in the world. Our number one news story of the day comes to us from Disc Golf Fanatic on Facebook. This is something that I missed during the tournament, during the Chess.com Invitational. Kevin Jones teaches us a new rule. Apparently, if you're not at the tee five minutes prior to tee off, perhaps this is for elite events and above, I'm not sure, it is a two-stroke penalty. Kevin got to the tee with less than five minutes before his tee time and received the penalty. I enjoyed the comments about this, one of which pointed out that if you arrive just after the tee time, it's par plus four. If you show up before the tee time, but within that five minutes, it's a two-stroke penalty. You should obviously show up early enough before that five minutes, it's no penalty. So that five minutes uh, before the tee has a, a progressive penalty structure. Um, if you're on time, you're late. That's what everybody's dad used to say. I expect this won't happen again to any pros without due cause. And I expect it will help the professionalism of the sport just a little bit more. Thank you to the event, the Pro Tour, and the PDGA for enforcing the rule. And thank you to Kevin for helping us learn it. Number two news story of the day, the Memorial MP40 YouTube coverage put out by the Disc Golf Guy. Thank you, Terry, for providing this coverage. This is a story I would not normally care about, except... The players on the card were telling. Kale Laviska, Steve Brinster, K.J. Naibo, the original K.J., and Pete Ulibarri, Paul's older brother. Wow. Uh, that is a card that I would definitely watch. Perhaps it is time to start thinking about a Masters Tour. Oh, speaking of which, the Masters Tour exists. Let's hope it grows into something super special there in Alabama this week. Links in the show notes to all of those and our next story. The Infinite Discs blog looks a lot like the Players Meeting email. Charlie at the Players Meeting does a really great job. This is a, a, a disc golf email newsletter. He sends it out twice a week during the season. He breaks down the happenings in disc golf. Honestly, I feel like I could just read his work to you all and do a better job than I do. But hey, I'm trying, so here I go. Anyway, the interesting piece about this is that the Infinite Discs blog, which I think is one of the best store blogs out there, has posted the players meeting email as their own blog or as a part of their blog. I reached out to Charlie and this is what he said, quote, it's a new partnership we're trying out. I want to get my hard work newsletter in front of more people, and Infinite wants to diversify its blog content with tour coverage. With these, quote, snippets hosted on their site, the hope is to have them promote it to their large audience and bring more subscribers to my list. Win-win. Uh, Infinite has been very easy to work with, so hopefully this will continue and I can grow my audience without too much extra effort, and they can grow their audience as well as content. I noticed that something similar is happening with your podcast, meaning Disc Golf Daily, and Gatekeeper. Congrats, it seems to be working out well. I would have to say he agrees. We keep seeing listenership go up and up. So thank you, Infinite. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Gatekeeper. And thank you for listening. And it is time for the United Rankings of Disc Golf. We end the show with an interview with Scott Stokely about Stokely Discs. Stay tuned for that. But, so we take five world ranking systems and one power ranking system, put them all together, and create our unified rankings of disc golf, Urge. On the men's side, in third place right now, Ricky Wysocki. Out of the six systems, he has two seconds and two thirds, which is good enough for a third overall. Eagle McMahon has one first, two seconds, and one third, putting him in second place in our United rankings. 
and Calvin Heimberg has four firsts and one second, making him the United Rankings champion. Calvin Heimberg is the best disc golfer on the planet right now. On the women's side, Missy has three thirds. She is in third place. Own has five seconds and a third. She is in second place. And Kristen Tatar has five firsts. The one first she doesn't have, just so you know, is the power rankings, which Evelina leads because she just won. That's how power rankings work. Uh, Holland and Hanley also are in the conversation as well. On the men's side, Paul McBeth, Anthony Barella, and Aaron Gossage are also in the conversation. And there you have it for our United Rankings of Disc Golf. Stay tuned for my Q&A with Scott Stokely. Scott Stokely has had a very interesting career in disc golf. I'm not going to go through it all, but suffice it to say, he's when I started playing the sport, he was one of the people that I looked up to and said, he's one of the best. And 30 years later, he is still going at it, and we had the opportunity to interview him about his new line of golf discs. Question number one. You say, quote, I am manufacturing discs. You also say, quote, we own. Do you want to share if you have financial backers and what percentage of the company you own? Scott's reply, yes, I have financial backing, but it is my company. Every decision made is made by me. I have help with the molding and disc design, but it is my company. It will sink or swim based on the decisions I make. I love the ownership, well, that he has and that he is taking. Um, It's not always easy to recognize that when things don't work, the guy sitting in the top seat is the reason. Question two. I love the logo. Do you want to give a shout out to the designer? Scott's reply. Justin Logo made the graphic design, and I promised to make a separate video about how the logo was developed. Well done, Scott and Justin. I look forward to that video. Question three. How are these discs related to the marijuana-themed discs that you made maybe a decade ago? Scott's reply. Regarding the older discs that were released and I was involved with, I've spent eight or nine years trying to distance myself from that not-so-good idea that I had. He did take ownership of him having that idea. I'm not changing my stance on what I believe about liberty and freedom and how good that industry has been, but I want to distance myself from that, and it's not anything I want to be a part of. That's not who I am. So those old gateway discs, I'm guessing, are not really a part of the equation anymore, and I'm also guessing that these discs are not made by gateway. Question four, I had to ask it, how far do you throw these discs? Scott's reply, I don't throw them very far. They are a putter and a mid-range, and I am a senior citizen. It is a perfect storm of not throwing far, but I am still me, I guess. So I throw the putter over 300 feet easily and could get it to 350. I throw the mid over 400. So I guess I do still throw far. Not as far as Anthony Barella, though. It was fun talking with Scott about this and seeing how genuinely pleased he was um, and at, at thinking about himself <laughs> in the current stage of disc golf. Um, yeah, it's hard to, to throw 700 feet when you're 50. And I finished by asking him about the community flight numbers. Uh, and he says regarding the, and this is basically, he's, he's taking a, a well, I'll, actually I'll let him answer. Regarding the community flight numbers, As soon as all the prototypes have gone out the door, everyone that purchased one will get an email with a form to fill out. Hopefully as many people as possible will fill them out. While not everyone really knows how flight numbers work to properly assess them, I'm not sure what the response will be. It will be in the 500 to 1,000 response range. That's the number of people that will respond. So it will be a large enough number, and we will have a really good idea how they fly. I also think this community-based approach is a good idea. The community can do a better job rating how their discs fly. The community will be right more often than an, an individual person. I've also wanted it to do this way. I, 
I swear by doing it this way, and now I get to, because it's my company. I think that was a great way to finish, and I thank you very much, Scott, for taking the time to answer my questions. StokelyDiscs.com, check them out. I'm excited uh, to see how this goes. That's it for Disc Golf Daily. If you have any news, thoughts, or opinions you'd like to share, email us at discgolfdaily at aol.com. Have fun, throw them straight, and hit the thin gap. <laughs>